Hey everyone, Will here with my flea market finds for July 22nd, uh, 2020. Um, got some, not a whole lot of stuff to show you this week, but uh, some really good quality things. So, um, a few things might turn out to be really, uh, do really well. Um, we'll get right to it. Let's take a look. A uh, box of Britain is still with the original box. You can see the original price. Uh, 34.95 pounds. Uh, brand new in a box. Paid 20 for that. Haven't looked them up. Not sure how they'll do. Uh, this is a coil of uh, heat heat tape. Keep your pipes from freezing. This is expensive stuff. This goes for between two and three dollars a foot. Uh, good amount there. Uh, that was five bucks for the entire uh, entire roll. Some uh, soft drink bottles uh, from an organization I never knew existed. National Soft Drink Association. It's from 1975. Um, I guess every time they had a convention, they had a special uh, bottle uh, going to it. Uh, here's a nice old one here from 71. Uh, I think this might be the oldest from 52 from Atlantic City. Pretty neat. Uh, paid $3 a piece for all the bottles and from what I've seen some of them can go for collections of them can go for several hundred. Uh, here's one by Amber Beach. Uh, so they probably pretty rare they didn't make too many of them this one's uh, just an old RC bottle from uh, West Virginia uh, it was a great weekend for bayonets and knives uh, probably one of the best I've had in years uh, most of these came from the same person uh, the person I got those uh, uh, German bayonets from last week uh, they were back this week and uh, um, got some more from them. Uh, we'll go down the line here. It's a uh, Japanese World War II uh, bayonet with the uh, Leather Frog 25. Uh, World War II Italian bayonet 25. Here's a uh, World War I um, French. Uh, bayonet, Lavelle, uh, 75 on that. Haven't checked to see if the uh, scabbard matches the bayonet. Just a uh, run of mill uh, Mosin Nagant bayonet. This one could be good. It's not marked. Um, if this is Civil War, this could be a extremely valuable bayonet. Uh, it's got the uh, chest pot. Uh, French chest pot uh, design on the blade, but it's unmarked and it's got that look to it. I'm hoping Civil War. Uh, here's a uh, French uh, chest pot bayonet. Best thing about this is that the number on the bayonet matches the number on the scabbard, which will greatly uh, help the value. That was uh, 75. This one's probably the most interesting of a lot. This is a um, World War II Japanese bayonet, but look at the holder. If you're familiar with World War II stuff, this holder is American. And it doesn't look like it's been thrown together in the field like a theater made uh, piece. It, it really looks factory made. Um, so you got a Japanese bayonet with an American-made uh, belt attachment. Um, I've never seen this before. Uh, it's, like I said, it's very interesting. Uh, the maker's mark on it is the star. Get that to focus. That's a uh, made in Japan, Jensen. Uh, manufacturer um, it's an early bayonet with the hook uh, hook on there 
Of course, the bayonet may have been married to the uh, scabbard. Um, it's no, no real telling how old the scabbard is. Um, but this little piece right here, that's what makes it for me. Uh, have to do a little uh, research on that. $40 on that. Another, uh, um, this is later in the war, you can tell. Uh, they started making the scabbards. Uh, uh, Japanese started making the scabbards out of wood. Um, uh, you can see it's just wood tied together. Uh, and on the bayonet themselves, they started, it's much cruder. The sides are just square, squared off. Nothing fancy on the uh, on the guard. Um, they even get cruder than this as the war uh, went on. Uh, but right by it, uh, fifty bucks. It's probably one hundred fifty dollar bayonet right there. A uh, infield uh, bayonet, twenty five. Nice having the uh, canvas frog with it. Uh, couple of uh, Gerber, I think these are the Mark II, Mark III uh, knives. Need a little cleaning up on the blade and we'll, uh, you can go by the serial number to see uh, exactly when it was manufactured. Um, there are guys that collect one from every year. Um, the great leather uh, sheath. Uh, a lot of times guys in the military threw the sheaths out uh, and used a, uh, the military sheath. Um, I think because they had to, not because they necessarily wanted to. Um, but really good shape. This one's got a little nick in the blade there. But uh, razor sharp and they always sell great. Had no trouble selling them. Uh, they weren't cheap. Uh, they were 125 for the pair. Uh, but uh, should do well. And this is a capture paper um, for a German rifle. Best of all, it shows, it just says German rifle. No serial number, no model number, or anything. Um, it's pretty neat it says, it is my belief that the above described equipment is of no value to the Allied forces, signed by the uh, guy in charge, uh, MTB Squadron 34, uh, so it was approved, this guy was approved to uh, take home a one German rifle, so Somebody could basically take this and uh, uh, put it with a German rifle and it would greatly increase the value of the German rifle. Um, just make sure that the German rifle was manufactured. Um, if, if you get a German rifle, make sure it was manufactured before uh, November 44. Uh, but uh, pretty cool piece. Uh, what are we doing? Um, recoil shield, three bucks. Shooting stuff always does well. A couple boxes of uh, 308 ammo for myself. Uh, that weren't cheap, twenty dollars a box. A couple of uh, razors, still in the original uh, packaging. Uh, six of four. They always do well. Love the ashtray from the uh, Alamo uh, Bucking uh, Bronco. Uh, that was five. I had this in a previous video, but forgot to talk about it. A whole uh, jar of cotter pins. Uh, this probably sat on somebody's uh, up in somebody's garage or workshop for 50 years um, before they had an estate sale and sold it. Now I'll take it, put it in my workshop, where it's probably going to sit for uh, for 50 years before somebody sells it. A uh, whole stack of patches. They're all pool related. 
but uh, it was only uh, $15 for the whole stack. Probably get uh, 12 for this one alone. Tupperware uh, ketchup mustard containers. Uh, they were a buck a piece. Mambo juice. It's just a can, but I love the uh, figures on the, on the outside of it. That was three bucks. Nice piece of uh, Hungarian uh, porcelain, a little trinket. Uh, three. Uh, burial flag up top, that was uh, ten. Burial flags always do well for me. Love the makeup case from the uh, 1960s. Looks like it's never been used. Uh, just a uh, just a really cool piece and a bottle of Hypnotique um, not really I think I paid like five for that uh, oh, yeah five um, probably go for about 15 or 20 a uh, Disney World uh, shirt looks like it's never been worn with uh, Donald Duck on it Disney stuff always does well uh, that was a three dollar shirt uh, Chessy system belt buckle uh, that was uh, five bucks. Couldn't find any examples for this, uh, so that tells me it's fairly rare. Um, I'm gonna put 50 bucks on it. A uh, really nice uh, blue topaz uh, bangle bracelet, uh, 20 bucks. Uh, jade uh, necklace that was uh, 10 that could be an expensive piece probably 100 125 on that uh, Brighton bangle 20 bucks Brighton stuff people love Brighton um, the I think it's uh, Malachite and I think the purple is turquoise uh, that's Taxco that was 20 uh, Taxco does well the slinky box with the original slinky inside has seen better days uh, but just couldn't pass it up since it had the original box so ten dollars on that uh, the rings were eight apiece these are um, reversible kind of a neat idea for a ring you get two rings in one um, problem is it's not really high quality uh, but interesting pieces. A uh, camp knife, stag, clean that up a little bit. Sterling ring there, um, that was eight. Alex and Annie bangle, eight. The koi fish uh, necklace, that was five. Eight on the uh, Paris uh, coin bracelet. Um, little bangle it's sterling it's marked fusion uh, that was 15 uh, down here uh, went to the uh, local pawn shop and uh, got some pretty good prices um, some really interesting things uh, favorite one right here um, it's 18 carat, 5.6 grams. We got this for uh, $240, uh, which is right about scrap value. It's got a maker's mark inside there. It kind of reminds me of a uh, wax seal ring. Put, drop some wax on and press that in. A couple pieces of uh, turquoise on the side. Uh, that's right around scrap price for that. Uh, this one, 20 bucks. It's uh, just some enamel. I'm not quite sure what the stone is there. But uh, cool looking ring. Uh, this one is uh, diamond and sapphire. That one is uh, let's see. That one was uh, uh, 60 bucks on that. The uh, Malachite uh, in 14 karat, uh, we got that for uh, um, 30. Malachite always does well. 
Uh, Esposito necklace didn't come from the pawn shop. Uh, that was ten. The uh, garnet and uh, diamond uh, we got that for um, sixty on that. And really nice one there. It's a uh, 10 carat um, aquamarine. We thought it might be blue topaz. Uh, got that for uh, 120. So uh, we'll definitely get uh, get some pictures of that. Get that listed. Um, should be some money to be made there. A uh, whole box of switch plates. Um, somebody's going to love these things. Uh, they were a buck a piece. Uh, enough to do at least one room, I think. And my favorite piece of the... Uh, well, one, of the one of my favorite pieces. Uh, this one's a keeper. It's going to go down my man cave. Uh, when I walked up to it, uh, saw the Atlas Powder Company. Um, so I'm thinking, eh, you know, dynamite box. They do sell well. Asked the guy how much. He said 40 bucks, uh, which really doesn't leave too much of a room for anything. But then he turned it around on me and showed me that somebody had turned it into a little... Uh, little storage box and to me that just makes makes the piece I, uh, it's a little swollen up I squirted it, had to squirt it out uh, but I love that piece I mean talk about character uh, so I always need storage myself so uh, this will be going keep staying with me uh, the guy took 30 on it so uh, I've got one little uh, strap here. I don't know if I'll fix that or replace that. Kind of want to try to keep it all original. But uh, to most people, it's just a piece of junk crate. Uh, but uh, I love the look. So there we go. Uh, keep an eye on my store, Terminal 99, uh, and my other jewelry store, which is where most of the stuff will be appearing over the next week. So until next time, it's Will Yard Sales Five List, and we'll talk again soon.